from 33 to 55 in just a few minutes. Yes, mm. yes. Right. Well, you know, we're we're a slow starters, and it uh, usually does grow throughout. So hopefully it does continue <laughs> to grow. <laughs> yes. Okay. Just All right. Have mm -hmm. you reached? Okay, the recording yeah, yeah. is yeah. slow start, but finish strong. Yes. Amen. Okay, a very good morning, good afternoon, good evening to every single one present here tonight. This is Old Passion Singapore Malaysia Global, nurturing mindset and leadership for passion and oblast. My name is Jeannie Tan, and uh, I'm your host tonight. Old Passion started in November 2020. Our first trial webinar started on the 20, was on the 23rd of September, 2021. And our first public webinar was on 30th of September, 2021, under the mentorship of Dr. Bill Williams. So the mission of Old Passion is nurturing mindset and leadership for passion and oblast igniting passion for humanity and encouraging the formation of passion groups for all blessed and to help them achieve their goals. All passion has a host team committed to the vision and mission of all on passive and to Mr. Ash Mufara. Although this webinar is coming out of Singapore, but the host team consists of global affiliates to ensure that we embrace global projects to bless the world, to eradicate poverty, and to uplift humanity. We believe that On Passive is a divine movement to make the world a better place. We also believe that Mr. Ash Mufara is chosen by God to lead this movement. And we are all so privileged to be a part of this global movement. And tonight, actually, we have a special speaker, and she's none other than Dr. Tunishai, who is going to blow us all <laughs> up. And we're going to be on fire after she speaks to us. So without further ado, I'll pass this segment to, before I call on Dr. Tunishai, I would like to pass this on to Mabel, who will take the next segment. Mabel, yes. please. <clears throat> yes, Thank let you. me show uh, a video as an introduction. Thank you, Jeannie. You got to do it yourself. No sound. No sound. There's sound. You have to unmute your mic on the upper right of the video. Unmute Correct. the speaker. Singapore. Singapore. Absolutely. We are in Singapore. We'll make a show.
in that. Yes. Well. Thank you. And that was a wonderful video created by Kumaran. And it's We Celebrate. And uh, let me quickly introduce Dr. Tunishai. Today, she's going to speak to us, taking control of life from the inside out. Dr. Tunishai is the founder and CEO of this organization, this charity organization called Your Own Uniqueness. She's an international, let's hear this. She's an international transformation speaker, life coach, empowerment trainer, teacher of life skills host of a former talk show yes called the dr tunishai for dr tunishai Ford show she is the editor and chief of an online international magazine called discovering you magazine educator and author of four books this is a comma in your life, not a period. I miss the hugs, but not the hurts, H-U-R-T-S, the spirit in you. And she wrote this book of which she's going to talk to us about taking control of your life from the inside out. Let me uh, see if I can just show this. Okay, images. Yeah. This is the book she has written. Taking control of your life from the inside out. I read the back cover and it is exciting. It's, it's about being healthy in your mind and body. I will not go ahead of her, but we're all looking forward to how she will share her own transformation and how she has touched many, many lives globally. And I especially love this topic, taking control of our lives from the inside out. Dr. Tunishai, please, the whole platform is yours. Take all the time in the world we are here tonight to be transformed. Thank you. Good evening. Hello. Good evening. Good morning, and to some of you, good afternoon, I guess. <laughs> Welcome to Old Passion. And thank you so much. I see Dr. Bill. What are you smiling about, Dr. Bill? I haven't even got started yet. 
<laughs> Exciting. Hallelujah. I am so excited about today. And this is truly a topic from my heart. So I'm hoping that you will allow me to share from my heart. And as it was introduced, this book was my, my last book. This is the last book that I wrote. And I wrote this book because I realized that in order for us to truly be transformed and to truly reach our potential and do the things that I believe that God has ordained for each and one of us to do, we must go through a metamorphosis. A metamorphosis. Yes, I said metamorphosis. That's a total transformation from being one creature to turning into another one. And the word of God tells us to be thou not conformed to this world, but be thou transformed by the renewing of your mind. So this is the reason why I wrote this book, because I realized that we can never reach our full potential and do what we've been called to do unless we take control of our lives. But it starts from the inside. Unfortunately, we live in a society where people are so geared to adorning the outside. You see people going to the gym, working out, getting the six pack, making sure their body is atoned. You see women, how they adorn themselves. themselves. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. You should adorn yourself. But true transformation, true fulfillment comes from the inside out. And we begin to realize that when you begin to know and understand that you are a purpose-driven individual that God has created from the earth in his image, then you'll begin to realize that that body that you're working on, that's going to change. Every single one of us on this, on this platform can look at their bodies and say, it changed. <laughs> you are not the same person that you were when you were 21. Right, Dr. Bill? <laughs> we're not the same person. Okay, but I tell you what, the only thing that can grow and get better and improve and be enlightened and be fulfilled is the heart, the soul, the spirit man. And this is what I want to address today. I believe with all my heart that there is a correlation between work and your personal life. Now, when I say work, I'm talking about the God-given mission that God has given us all. I'm not talking about a job. A job is just a means of bringing in income. That's what all a job is. Remember I told you all last week that I said there's no shortage of jobs. Remember I said that, there's no, there's no shortage of jobs and there's no shortage of opportunities. But there's a shortage of people who work, who are fulfilling their purpose, who are living their life's dreams who are realizing their full potential, there's a shortage there. How do we know that? Every time you turn on the news, read the newspapers, hear from here, hear the, from here say whatever's going on, you all know what's going on in the world. And people who only think about the outside, people who are drawn by how they feel and not by what's on the inside, they're the ones who you see in the papers and on the news who are being self-destructive. Remember I shared with you all last week about a wonderful man, my mentor, he's gone now. His name is Dr. Miles Monroe. And I made the statement last, last week. I said that he said that if a person does not fulfill their purpose, it is inevitable, it is inevitable that they are going to be self-destructive and in the process, many times they take people with them. They hurt other people. And another profound statement that he made, oh, this is so profound. He said that the richest place in the world the is the graveyard. Think about that. The richest place in the world is the graveyard. Why? So many people are in their graves who never fulfilled their purpose, never realized their dreams, never accomplished the mission that God ordained for them. They lived a full life. Oh, yeah, they had the duration of a full life in terms of, the, of their age. Many of them died old, but none of them made a contribution the way they were intended. So therefore, the grave holds a very, very full person. Our goal is to die empty, ladies and gentlemen. 
Our goal is to die empty. We want that body to be an empty shell when we leave here. And the only way we're going to accomplish that is by taking control. That's your job. God has his job and you have yours. And your job is to take control of your life to have fulfillment in every area of your life. Living your life's dreams. Doing what God has called you to do. Being, letting the example of Mr. Ashman Farah, like, you know, Mr. Ashman Farah, he's living his dream. He's walking in his purpose. And like Dr. Derek so eloquently says, he says this all the time, this is Mr. Ashman Farah's dream on passive. It's not yours. Oh yeah, you can piggyback on it and go for the ride. But what has God ordained and called you to do? What is your vision? What is the potential that you hold right now? When you wake up in the morning, what drives you? What do you get excited about? And I hope it's not just on passive because once the money starts really coming in, God is going to say, I'm giving you the money. Now, what are you going to do with it? And I'm going to give you four keys. Four keys that I strongly suggest that we use. You may say, well, this doesn't apply to me. Okay, maybe it doesn't. Maybe you've arrived. Maybe you've arrived. You don't need these keys. And that's fine. But I'm hoping that those who are on the YouTube channel and maybe relatives or friends of yours, maybe you'll tell them about this video and you'll share it with them because they may need it. Because I believe, I believe that when we apply these four keys or principles, that we are surely going to tap into what God has created for us to all experience in this lifetime. And the first key, the first key for taking control of your life from the inside out is working on your inner self. Having with, that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a inner makeover, working on your inner self. And I look at the scripture in Matthew 15, 11, he made the statement, Jesus made the statement, he said, but those things which proceed out of the mouth come from the heart, and they are the things that defile a man. And he went on to list the different things that defile us. And that's not what this topic is about. But what I'm trying to say is when we don't deal with the inner man, those are the things, those are the issues of life, the things on the inside, not the outside. Because we can put on a good show, we put on a nice dress, put on the makeup, and our, our hair is laid, our nice suits and everything. We put on a good show. We're showing off. We put on a good show. But who though, who sees us at the end of the day when we go home and we drink too much alcohol or we use too much drugs, prescription drugs, whatever, illegal drugs, or we go and binge and become obese and we're dealing with insidious diseases like diabetes, high blood pressure, obesity. That's the, that is us at the end of the day. But in, in, while, we're, while we're fronting during the day, we're showing people our best selves. But they see the outside of us. This is the reason why I chose working on your inner self is the number one key. And what is that? To build godly character. That comes from transforming your mind, building godly character, personality. And learning social skills. When I say social skills, I'm talking about how to entreat other people. That's something that comes from within. Because if you don't like people, if you don't like yourself, if you don't have a godly character, if you don't have a pleasant personality, then you're not going to treat people right. I'm sure all of us have experienced being around people and they're just, they're just so unpleasant. Why? Because they're miserable. And that misery exudes to you. Because they're not happy with themselves. They have a very, very unpleasant personality. They don't have a godly character. And they live that way. And you see it all the time. The other one is to forgive your others and forgive yourself. We're still under this. We're still under key number one. To be able to forgive others and forgive yourself. That is so important. How are you going to take control of your life if you're harboring unforgiveness? I talked about that during my cancer ordeal. I told you that one of the things that I believe that caused my cancer was that I lived with much bitterness in my heart. I was a very, very bitter woman. I had unforgiveness towards certain people. And I had to let that go. And when I decided that I wanted to let that go, it was too late. It had, uh, that, that cancer already incubated and grew and grew and grew until it became two large tumors. They were out of control. That's why I got my diagnosis. Don't allow 
a tumor to grow in your heart. So you must learn to forgive. There are people right now who may even be on this webinar, and they may be watching on YouTube, who are still harboring unforgiveness. There are people in your lives that hurt you, and you have not let that go. You haven't talked, you haven't spoken to them in years. You feel like they're not worth your time. But understand this, forgiveness is not for them. It's for you. It's for your healing. It's for your transformation. Because you can never go to the heights that God intended for you to go if you're harboring unforgiveness. And stop harboring past mistakes. Let that go. Stop browbeating yourself because you make mistakes. We all make mistakes. As long as we're in this flesh, as long as we're in this flesh, we're going to make mistakes. We're going to fall short. If God has forgiven us, if you've gone to God and said, forgive me, then let, th let that be and forgive yourself. Stop harboring. I made this mistake. I'm not good enough. You are good enough. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. God said you're good enough. And you need to begin to see yourself as being good enough. And then I want you to begin to start uh, validating your self-worth. Many people don't even realize their self-worth. Well, we may see a little bit of it. We may get a little accolades here and there. And we begin to say, okay, I guess I'm okay. But no, you're better than okay. Begin to validate your self-worth. That's what I want you to do. Begin to validate your self-worth and realize that you are more. You're all that. I always say you're all that in a bag of chips and the dip. That's who you are. So after you begin to build godly character and your personality, and after you stop harboring unforgiveness towards yourself and others and begin to let go of the past mistakes, begin to validate the wonderful person that you are. And that's key number one, working on your inner self. Key number two, oh my God, this is so important. Key number two, free yourself. Free yourself from toxic and co-dependent relationships. I wrote a whole book about that. And that book is called, I Miss the Hugs, But Not the Hurts. That's another one of my books that you can find in my, in my office when you go to my website. I wrote this book because I am a victim of a person who had low self-esteem. I'm being very transparent with you right now. I'm telling you my business, yes. I had low self-esteem, and I always found myself being in toxic relationships. I drew the wrong type of man. Yes, I did. I was always drawn the wrong type of man. I never understood why. First, in fact, the, the, title, the title of my first chapter of the book is, Lord, why do I keep attracting the wrong man? That's the, that's the title of my of the, that's the first the title of the chapter. Why do I, Tanisha Ford, keep attracting the wrong man? And God had to speak to my heart and let me know, hey, look, people, people always say the opposites attract. I say what I've learned and what God has shown me, no, likeness attracts. You attract what's in you. You're going to draw the kind of people that you are. If you're broken, guess what? You're going to draw a person that's broken. Okay? If you have a low self-esteem, do you think you're going to get somebody with a high self-esteem? No. You're going to repel them. You're going to draw someone just like you. If you have somebody, if you're a codependent person, you're going to be drawn to a person that's codependent. You understand what I'm saying? You need to be able to recognize that you are dealing with toxic people. Once you recognize the toxicity, then you need to learn how to find a way to get away from those things. And the way you find a way to get away from those things to begin to see yourself in the eyes of God. Begin to see your self-worth through the eyes of God. That goes back to number one, key number one, working on the inner self. And then you want to begin to surround yourself with people who celebrate you. Because once you begin to identify the toxic people in your life, and once you begin to make a decision that you're going to draw yourself, you're going to repel away from those kind of people, then you're going to ask God to help you bring forth people in your life that will celebrate you. And there's so many people who want to celebrate you. There's so many people, even right now on this platform, many of you have made friends. You've been in, you've been in on, on passive for years. You've made friends. You even probably even see each other in person from time to time. And it's going to get bigger and better. You want to surround yourself with people of like mind, like vision, like visions, like missions. That's what you want to do. You want to surround yourself with people who say that you, you're good enough. I want to celebrate you. I want to be celebrated. I'm tired of being torn down. 
and misused and used, aren't you? I want to be celebrated. And all of you should have a desire to be celebrated. You want to have a purpose relationship. God wants to give you all a purpose relationship, or should I say purpose relationships, plural. My mother used to always tell me as a little girl growing up, she said, baby, you cannot pick your relatives. You don't have any control over that. You don't have any control who your mother and father are. You don't have any problem, any 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 uh, control over who your, your sister, siblings are, your ne nephews and nieces and your cousins. You have no control over that. She said, but, but thank God you can pick your friends. Thank God you can pick your life partners. Thank God you can pick your associates. Thank God you can pick your business partners. You can choose that. So if you're in a relationship right now that you know there's not making you feel good and it's tearing you down, it's not taking you where you want to go and you feel that it's a hindrance, run. And again, ask God to help you draw those people who are going to celebrate and validate the wonderful person that you are. Key number three. Don't forget this four, four keys. Three, key number three. Get rid of the bad rituals and habits. Wow. That's an hour, that's an hour conversation right there. But because for the sake of the seminar, we're not, we're not gonna do that. But get rid of the bad rituals and habits. Ladies and gentlemen, we are what we eat. I've heard that expression, you've heard that expression before, you are what you eat. But it's not just talking about the physical food that you ingest, that you digest. We're talking about what your eyes see, what your ears hear, what your mind absorbs. That's what we're talking about. You are what you eat. We've got to stop in overindulging in the wrong things. Because when we begin to indulge in the wrong things, they become habits. And what do habits become, ladies and gentlemen? A lifestyle. And what does a lifestyle become if it's not a good lifestyle? It becomes a hindrance. And what does a hindrance become if we don't stop it? It's going to become a game stopper. It's going to stop you in your tracks. Many people leave here prematurely because of habits. The gambling. You have a man who dresses in a three-piece suit and goes to work every single day, making a great salary. But at the end of the day, he runs to the casino and gambles all his money. Let me tell you his scenario. He gambles all his money. He's married to a beautiful woman, a lovely wife, somebody that loves and adores him. And because he gambles off his money, he loses his home. His children are wayward. They're out there doing whatever they want to do because he doesn't, he doesn't have time to notice it because he's out there gambling. He loses his wife because he, he loses his home. He's, a, he's abusive. Not only does he gamble, he drinks. He's an alcoholic. He takes prescription drugs because he has ulcers. Do you see where I'm going with this? You, this, this, makes, this makes sense to everybody? You know what I'm saying? Habits. So do you think this person is going to be a productive person in this world? Oh, yeah, he might be productive right now. Again, remember, we're looking at the outside. We're looking at the facade. We're looking at the, the, the phoniness. That's what you're your phony. You're a pseudo person. That's what we're looking at. But if that person took the time, that same man with that three-piece suit with that great job, there's that word again, job. I didn't say work. So he hasn't gotten to work yet. He's still on a job. And that might be the reason why he is not living out his true potential because he's at a job. And remember, a job is conforming. All a job does is help you conform to what a boss, somebody else wants you to do. You're doing what they want you to do. You're, you're utilizing the skills and, and abilities that they want to, to perfect or to, to uh, produce that job. That's it. But work, remember I told you what work is. Work is that divine. Work is that divine task that God gives each and every one of us to fulfill a task that he wants to see come to fruition on this earth. That's what work is. Remember I said that. Now, we're still on number three. We're still on habits. But I'm trying to give you a scenario because I'm trying to show you how bad habits affect us. Eating the wrong foods. Come on now. Most people, especially Americans, and we know that I hate to say it, but it's true. American people, obesity is through the roof. My God, diabetes has taken over. 
the numbers have grown by the millions. Diabetics. It's almost like a household name. Oh, you a di I'm a diabetic. I they almost say it with pride. I'm a diabetic. Are you a diabetic? And what was your A1C? Oh my God, what's your what was your blood count today? It's, it's a conversation. It's almost proud. They're proud to talk about it. It's become so normal. Do you understand? Even when you go into look into the medical profession, isn't it a, a, a shame when you go to the hospital or go and see a doctor and the people who take your blood pressure and take your A1 and take and test your A1C, they're bigger than you. They suffer with obesity and they're in the medical profession. What's wrong with that picture? What's wrong with that picture? Habits. Staying up too late, watching TV, not getting enough rest. They used to use that as a form of torture. Do you know in different countries when they want to attack, when they want to interrogate you as a prisoner, they would, they would call it sleep deprivation. You interrogate, you interrogate yourselves. <laughs> you torture yourselves. Staying up too late, watching TV. Wait, what are you watching? Habits. These things are self-destructive. Habit, bad habits are self-destructive. We're talking about bad habits. Now you need to replace them with good habits. Feeding your body the nutrients that it needs. Taking away the alcohol and the gambling and the other habits that you may have. Going to bed at night, getting enough rest. I know that all we're all into on passive and we want to keep up with the different webinars. There's nothing wrong with that. But it's okay if you can't make them all. It really is. You can catch it on YouTube the next day. And I'm not trying to tell you all what to do because I I like to watch the webinars too. But I promise you, if it's at 11, 12 o'clock at night, Dr. T is not on it. I'm not. I'm just being honest with you. You may say I'm not faithful. I'm not on it. I'll watch it the next day. Or I'll catch it in the back office. I'll read it. That's what I'm going to do. Go to bed. Get your rest. Eat right. Drink plenty of water. Hang around the right type of people. Okay? That's what we want to do. We want to break those bad habits and rituals because when we have bad habits and rituals, we are never going to reach the plateau. We're never going to reach the potential that God has intended for us to reach. This body was created to work in sync. Everything in your body is supposed to work perfectly. He didn't make a mistake. He didn't go, oop, did I do that? That's not what God did. He knew exactly what he was doing. Everything in your body is supposed to work in sync. Everything complements everything in your body. Everything. The heart, the heart pump, the pumps, the blood flows, the spleen, the liver. The kidneys, everything works in sync. And when you abuse it through bad habits, guess what? That grave that we talked about, it's not going to be an empty grave. It's going to be full of your potential, full of your dreams, full of your purpose, because you left here prematurely because of what? Bad habits. So get rid of bad habits and rituals. Stop overindulging. Stop making God look bad. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. Begin to love the skin you're in. Begin to love the body that you're in. Begin to take care of yourself. Stop overindulging in things that you know are going to hurt you. If you're not happy on your job, then go then leave your job. Remember I told you all, I don't know if I shared this with you last time I spoke, but I had a good job. I had a job making an excellent salary. I was a teacher. But one of the largest districts in Michigan, Detroit Public Schools. And I hated the job. I made a good salary. And they changed my position at least two or three times the whole time I was there. Because I was miserable. I was miserable. And somebody asked me a question, a very profound question. They said, Tini Shai, how much time do you give to Detroit Public Schools? And I told them. And they said, how much time do you give to your dream? Because I used to always talk about my dream the purpose that I believe that God has called me to. I used to always talk about that. Everybody, Anybody who met me knew that I thought I had a purpose and I knew what it was. And this young man asked me, he said, well, how much time do you spend working on your purpose? When I thought about it, I said, oh my God. And as soon as I answered that question, and the answer, and the answer to that question was not that much time because I was giving so much time to the job. The J-O-B, so I can make ends meet, so I can pay for the bills that I made, the, the, the more bills that I made. So when you have a job, what you do is you make more bills that you got to pay off, right? That's what I did. And when I had an opportunity, I said, I can't do this anymore. I was dying on the inside. 
I left my nine to five job. Sometimes I was working uh, double shifts. That's what I was doing. I would go to one site in the morning from nine to three, come home and let my dog out, get back on the road again and go on the other side of town to work from five to nine. That's what I did every day. I did this for years, chasing the dollar. That's what I did. That's what I did. I had it going on, right? I had the cars. I had a beautiful home. You understand what I'm saying? I had it going on. Dr. T had it going on. But Dr. T was miserable. And when I left that job, I have not looked back. But guess what I'm doing now? I'm working. I'm doing God's mission. I'm doing what God called me to do. And no, I'm not going to sit there and tell you I'm making as much money as I made when I was making had my job. But guess what? I'm fulfilled. I have not looked back. I have no regrets. No regrets. I can sleep in if I want to, but I don't because I'm always I have a I have a senior dog, you know. So Mabel knows I have a senior dog, and I have I, I take care of my baby. So I'm up early with her. You know, I, I I make the effort to eat better. I make my own schedule. I have a team, I have a board, we have events, and I like living that way. I like hearing from God and say, okay, what's my assignment today? He may say, take a rest, or he may say, go do this, go do that. And no, it's not where I really wanted to be. I'm looking, I'm looking to God to expand it. And I'm hoping that on passive will, may, will play a big role in that. But if he doesn't do that that way, he'll do it another way. God is not caught off guard. He doesn't go oops. He knows the end of the plan. He knows what he's doing. It's time for us to get on that bandwagon, on his bandwagon, and make a decision that we're going to do what he's called us to do, how he wants us to do it. And the only way we're going to do that is to stay away from those bad habits and those rituals that hinder us from being the best that we can be. That's number three, key number three. Now the last but not least, last but not least, put God first. Now if Dr. Dr. Benny will probably tell me, Dr. T, that should have been number one. But Dr. Benny, you know me. I always put that one last because that's the one I want you to really remember. I'm driving it home. You can sit there and get rid of the bad habits. You can get out. You can get out of the toxic relationships. You can work on the inner person. But if you don't have God in your life, and you don't put Him first, it's all for naught. Why? Because He's the Creator. He's the Creator. How can the vessel tell the Creator what He wants to do and be? Right? Bible gives an illustration. How is the How is the pot? How is the pot going to tell the potter how you want to be? How He wants to be created? What he, What is His purpose? We got to check in with the with the, with the with God. We got to check in with the creator and say, what is our purpose? So you want to put God first. That's one thing. And the other part of that is trust him with your future. And I'm going to tell you right now, you may think that's an easy thing to do. You may That's a cliche. No, it's not a cliche. That's some serious stuff right there because a lot of people don't really know how to do that. Because we're so used, because God gave us free will, we're so used to doing our own thing. When we want to do it, how we want to do it. That's what we're used to doing. That's because we're human. Well, God gave me free will. I can do what I want to do. When I want to do it. How I want to do it. I'm not hurting nobody. No, you're not hurting anybody because he gave you free will. There's a such thing as God's perfect will and submissive will. That means that if submissive will means, okay, you can do your own thing because I gave you free will. But I promise you, you may spend a lot of time doing what I didn't call you to do. Okay, you may say, I'm not breaking any laws. No, you're not breaking any laws. You may say, well, I'm not hurting anybody. No, you're not hurting anybody. But guess what? At some point, he's going to knock on that big knocking of yours and say, dot, dot, okay. Now, you spent 20 years doing your own thing. Would you like to find out what I want you to do? Because what I want you to do is 100 times better and much more fulfilling. How many times have you met people who live to retire from that nine-to-five job? 65 and older. Some people are still working at 70. They retire and they sit down and they tell someone, you know, I wish I could have done. I always desired to have a mission over in Africa. Every time I get a chance, I go on YouTube or I go on Google and I call my relatives in Nigeria and I talk to them and find out what's going on. And I've always had a burning desire. I believe that God has called me to have a mission in Africa. And now you're 70 years old. Now, I'm not saying you can't do it. But guess what? You got more time behind you than you have ahead of you. And God may give you, give you another 20 years, but you're going to be tired. 
You could have started this when you were 20, when you were 30, when you had that desire and you were younger and you had the energy and you had the vitality. But you didn't because you were too busy chasing the dollar. You are too busy doing your own thing. And I'm guilty of that. I'm guilty of that. Tanisha Ford is guilty of that. I used to chase the dollar. I'm glad I didn't wait till I get to, got to be 65 or 70 before I got a clue. I left my job when I was still fairly young. And I haven't looked back. So the new, so new key number four is to put God first. Every day you wake up in the morning, acknowledge him. Wake up, thank you for waking up. Because you don't have to. God has promised. He told you, look, no day is promised to you. There are people that I know have heard of. They go to sleep and they go to sleep and they die in their sleep. And they just say the person died of natural causes. Is that a person who died of natural causes, did they die empty or did they die full? However we're going to leave here, that's not our business. That's his business. But every day you can wake up and look up and take a, take a deep breath. You should be thanking somebody and that somebody should be your God. Because you don't have to be here. Every day you turn on the news, you could be in Mali, you could be in Morocco, you could be in Libya, you could be in certain parts of Africa, you could be in Ukraine. You know where you are, you know what's going on in the world, you all keep up with the news. You could be any of those places, those people have lost, some people have lost everything, they'll never be able to rebuild. They don't even know what the future is going to look like because they can't see that far. They're just trying to get through the moment, not even talking about a day, they're trying to get through an hour. That's not any of you. You know how I know that's not any of you? Because you're here with me. And I hope that each and every one of you woke up this morning and said, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that Dr. T is speaking today. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Lord, that I can breathe. Thank you, Lord, that I have food in my refrigerator. Thank you, Lord, that there's food in my cupboard. Thank you, Lord, that I have money in my bank account. Thank you, Lord, that I have breath. Thank you that my children are safe. Thank you that my grandchildren are safe. Thank you that my spouse is safe. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your grace, your mercy, your, your, your steadfast love, your, 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 your long suffering with me. Thank you, Lord. Put God first. Trust him with your future. One of my favorite scriptures is Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust God with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding, but in all of your, of your ways. Acknowledge him and he will direct your path sometimes that's hard to do i get it but we learn to trust god with our futures that means it's not about you it's on him and step by step he's going to lead the way when i pray i ask god first of all lord lead and guide me open up the doors that no man can shut make a way where there is no way give me a life make over that's my prayer. I'm telling you the truth. I'm not making this up as, as I go along. I'm telling you what I do. This is what Dr. T does every day. And I believe that he is ordering my footsteps because I've given it to him. And the last part of trusting him with your future is to maintain an attitude of gratitude. Begin to just be thankful for everything he has given you. Always be thankful because, again, you could be somewhere else. It could be far worse than it is. You know, when I think about my little problems, you know, when I think about the things that I may be going through, and there's some things I'm going through, but I'm not going to bother you with that. But you know what? I think about it, that's little compared to what some people are going through. I mean, I really, you know, you, know you, you may say my feet hurt, but thank God you got feet that hurt because some people don't have any feet at all. You may say I have to wear glasses, but thank God you can only wear glasses because some people can't see at all. You may say, well, golly, I don't have anything in my refrigerator that I want to eat. But thank God you have something in your refrigerator to eat because some people don't have any food at all. You may say, the water is not cold enough. Well, thank God you have water at all because some people don't even have water. Not clean water anyway. You, you understand where I'm going with that? So in order for you to take control of your life from the inside out and have fulfillment in every area of your life, you have to include God. I don't care how spiritual you think you are. I don't know what you, what you call spirituality. And I don't know where everybody is spiritually. I'm not judging that. I don't want to know. That's not my business. But if it does not include God, then it's not spirituality. 
If it does not include God, then you're not walking in your purpose. Now, last week I gave you my definition of purpose. This is the definition that God gave me years ago. Purpose. A divine and deliberate mandate from God. It glorifies him. Justifies man's existence. And it serves mankind. Let me say that again. Purpose. A divine and deliberate mandate. It's divine because it came from God. It's deliberate because God took the time to think about each assignment that he wants to give each and every one of us. And it's a mandate because he settled it. He didn't call anybody else but Moses to be Moses. He just said, well, okay, Moses, you don't want to go to Egypt and deliver the children of Israel. Okay, I'll send someone else. No, it doesn't say in the Bible. When you read Genesis, it doesn't say, well, you know... When you read the book, the book of Exodus, you don't. He doesn't say, "Well, you know, I asked Moses and I asked Aaron and I asked uh, Joshua, and Moses said he'll do it." No, 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 no. That's not how it reads. As far as we know, Moses went. You know why Moses went? Because it was supposed to be Moses' task. It was his work. It was his contribution to the world. It was his work, not his job. His work. It was a mandate. God settled it, and God wants to settle it with you. So purpose, a divine and deliberate mandate that what? It glorifies him. When you operate in your purpose, it's going to glorify God. Look at Mr. Ashford Farr. Before I even came on to speak, the host made the statement that we know that Mr. Ashford Farr is a godly man. And we know that this mission is godly. That's the first thing she said. Because I know that many of you, I know me. Many of you would not be following this man. I know Dr. Benny wouldn't follow because she's the, you know, she's the first lady of El Paso. And I know she would not be following Mr. Ashford Faro if he was flipping and flopping and serving anybody else but God. I don't have any doubt in my mind. I don't even have to ask her. She's right there. I'm looking at her. She's smiling at me. Give me a two thumbs up. There you go. I see her. That's what I'm saying. She see me because I know I'm right. I, if I don't know anything else about Dr. Benny, I know that. She would not be following Mr. Ashford Faro if he was not a godly man. If this was not a godly business, she would not be following him. If she did not feel this was a mandate from God, she would not be following him. If she did not feel that Aunt Passive is glorifying God, she would not be following him. Does that make sense? You are in a, you're in a company right now where you all can shine. God has given us all an opportunity where we can do what he's called us to do. I don't know if I told you the story, but... I have been, I was approached many times, at least four or five times to be a part of this company. I kept telling my friend, I don't want to be part of this. No, I'm too busy. Oh, but you, she couldn't even tell me about it. She was just stumbling and fumbling with it. I said, look, that's okay. I, I'm busy. I know he's a great guy. But she's, oh, he's a great guy. Yeah, he's a great guy. I understand. There are a lot of great guys out there. A lot of great guys. A lot of great girls. But I didn't want to hear it. I'm one of those people who didn't want to hear it, ladies and gentlemen. That was me. That was Dr. T. But the last time she asked me, about a year and a half ago now, she asked me, I'm, I'm the new kid on the block. That's right. I'm the new kid. I'm not even been here since the beginning. I'm here. They came in the, in the middle. They the last, the last part of this thing. That's me. I'm the, last, the, the new kid on the block. When she asked me, I believe that still quiet voice spoke to me and said, listen to her. And when she told me, he said, do it. The rest is history. Here I am speaking to Singapore and Malaysia. People from all over the world. I had no idea that God, an awesome God, would have given me an opportunity to speak to people from all over the world. I am honored. I'm honored, Dr. Bill. I'm honored, Dr. Dr. Benny. I'm honored. I'm honored, deep dive. I'm honored. I am truly an international speaker. And I never had to leave my house. <laughs> it can't get no better than that. It can't get you go, Dr. Bill. It can't get no better than that. Why? Because I trusted God with my future. I didn't know. I thought it was going to just be a, a, like everybody else. Okay, well, I sign my name. You know what I'm saying? And, and when the money starts rolling in, they're going to just they'll put you know, the, it's going to be they're going to drive traffic to my website. And I'll just sit there and do life like I've been, been doing, just running your, your own uniqueness. So I had no idea that a platform would be created for Tanisha and Ford. And you all listening to little old me. Who the fuck? That's why I said to put God first. 
How can I ever be all that God has called me to be? How can I ever reach my full potential? How can I ever, you know, control things from the inside out if I don't acknowledge that there's somebody out there who thinks more of myself than I think of me? And he has an assignment for me. And he has an assignment for each and every one of you. Many of you are doing things right now that you never thought you'd be doing. Podcasts, webinars, YouTube channels. You probably even got more speaking engagements. Whatever. You, you, you got missions that you want to fulfill. You, got, you want to go to Africa. You, you want to you wanna build uh, 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 orphanages. Whatever. You, know, you want to you have uh, 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 shelters for people. You want to do all kinds of things that you thought you'd never be able to do. You're going to live your dream now. But whatever it is you want to do, don't leave my God out of it. Please. Don't leave him out. Take it with you. In fact, don't take it with you. Let him lead the way. That's, isn't, that bad? isn't that right, Dr. Benny? Let him lead the way. Don't take it with you. Let him lead the way. That's why the word of God says, trust God with all your heart. All your heart. And don't lean to your understanding because you don't have no understanding. Get that, when you get that in your mind that you don't have any understanding, what do you mean, Dr. Benny? I said it. You don't have any understanding. Get that in your head. Okay? And they acknowledge him. Acknowledge him that he is the he's the pilot, not the co-pilot. He's not the one sitting next to you. Though he's the pilot. When you get on the plane to go on a trip, are you, do you stand next to the next to the pilot? You know the captain say, okay, now make sure you turn the plane that way. Now, how many times have you made this trip? At least a hundred times, ma'am. What? The, okay, I want you. To, I want you to turn the plane. Do you do that? No, because when you sit in that seat. Wherever you're seating, you don't tell the captain how to fly the plane. And you don't tell him how where, where you're going. He's been there. So you, what do you do? You sit down and you relax and you trust that he knows where he's going. And he knows where he's taking you. And it might be a female. I don't, I don't, I don't want to be sexist. Or it might be a female captain too, okay? A female pilot, okay? They, they, have, they have female pilots. Okay, but they know where they're going. It's the same thing with God. He knows where you're going. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, I know the plans I have for you. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. I'm not trying to cause you any harm. I'm not saying you won't go through any pain. I'm not saying that you won't feel any discomfort. You will. But guess what? At the end of the thing, it's going to be grand. It's going to be spectacular. And when you see when they go to your when they go to your tombstone, hopefully later than sooner, it's going to say, "Here lies an empty tomb. Only the shell. It's only the shell." Because guess what? This person fulfilled everything God called them to do. How? Because they took control of their lives. They took control of their lives from the inside out. They took care of the inside. They came out of toxic and codependent relationships. They got rid of the rituals and the bad habits. And they had the sense to put God first and trust him with their future. I promise you, ladies and gentlemen, if you do these four things, I have eight in my book. If you want to get my book, I name eight keys. I'm only giving four because I want to encourage you to get the book. It's a fantastic read. It's not a long book, but it's a fantastic read. It will really inspire you. If you've been inspired by the little bit that I've given you now, just imagine what the rest of the book can do for you. Okay, but I want to just thank you so much for allowing me to share and be on this platform. God bless you. Have a blessed, a wonderful, blessed day. Thank you. Mm. Thank you so much. Dr. T, thank you. We are digesting. And um, Dr. Bill, would you like to be the first one? This is my purpose mug. See my mug? I made a mug with that, what I told you about. We designed this mug. It's on my website. It's my purpose mug. The, the definition of purpose that I gave you guys is on yes. my mug. <clears throat> And this is my butterfly and swan. 
And that's a symbol mm-hmm. for transformation. You know, a butterfly and swan, they go through a transformation. So that's all that my logo. If you ever go to my website, you'll see the plant, you'll see that. The butterfly and the swan transformation. I just wanted to say that. Thank you. I apologize for interrupting. Thank you. No. Can we write her website somewhere in the chat? Uh Dr. T's website. So yes, that we can uh, Tony, uh, I, think, I believe that Tony is here. She'll put that in the site in the uh chat for you guys. Yeah. Uh, Get Tony. Tony. And the uh, books. Tony did it already, but okay, she, she can well, do it. Great. I'm just gonna say I'm glad we um, took a Ford instead of a Chevy today. That was a, a wonderful motivational uh, expose. I, I'm sure there's not a single person that attended all seventy people that tuned in who didn't take something away from your talk, mm. Dr. Tanisha. Um, my, my brain always goes back to uh, how do I relate to things that people talk about when they give a speech, a talk? And it always seems to resonate to me if, if I can make sense of it in my own terms, you know, how I think. And so medically, I I think about you examined and diagnosed the problem when you started talking about take stock of your inner self and figure out where you are. You know, get the diagnosis right. Know where you are, your location, uh, your condition. So you gotta know the starting point and then you remove all the stuff that's not good. So that was like the two middle parts of your talk. It's like you're removing the toxic people, the toxic situations, you're getting rid of the junk in your life, the bad habits. So it's the people around you and then it's yourself. You, you have to clean yourself of the bad habits, not just get away from the people that kind of lead you on to be in a bad circle, right? And finally, you put it back together after you did the surgery, after you did the removal, the cutting off of the bad stuff, you added what was good, you know, and basically you add God, you add what's good and live by a set of principles. People that live with principles tend to be better citizens. People that don't have a foundation, uh, they tend to go off track and you see that in our cities around the world where the violence and the looting and the things happening around the world people that don't have a foundation tend to do what the world wants to do and what they want to do so yeah i'm proud to be part of uh, a team of people this group right here especially whose passion is to follow the um, precepts of our our God, our Father, the faith that we are brought up under. Those who follow a strong faith typically are going to be better citizens of the world. So, you know, back in the sad days when they in America, when they said take God out of the schools was the beginning of the downfall of much of our society in our country, because God is a, a stabilizing force. If you have belief systems that are strong, then you, you actually live by a set of rules. And that's not just man's rules, but it's, it's spiritual rules that are much broader than just don't jaywalk across the street or don't speed in your car. And uh, I think more people live that way, uh, they'll find their purpose and it'll be a lot more beneficial to the world. Now, passive is, of course, centered around Ash's culture of being giving before you actually have to worry about anything else. Give and you'll be given too. It's better to give than receive. Who embodies that? So I definitely enjoyed your talk. I enjoyed every aspect of it and how you put it together. And I'm looking forward to the next four points to see what you came up with to finish this story. So thanks so much. Wonderful. The other four points is in the book. Until we bring her back 
with the other four points. You know, the book, the website, her website is uh, in the chat. Uh, Brother Jeffrey Morlock, would you like to further encourage us with what we have heard? Wow, yeah. Um, thank you. I, I certainly appreciate that. Uh, wow, Dr. Ford, thank you. You know, I, I appreciate your candor and I, just your, your plain speak on this whole topic. I think that speaks well of who you are and where you're at in your life. Um, I did get some takeaways from here and, and Dr. Bill had uh, kind of touched on those as well. So I think life is pretty good for us. Um, you know, taking control of our life though doesn't mean that we control everything that happens. It just means that we are able to confidently move forward with our own goals and our own priorities um, and at the same time, we embrace the change that's inevitable in life. Uh, a lot of that has to do with having a clear idea of our own beliefs, right? And, and understanding what our beliefs are gives us a, a clarity, if you will, that gives us the ability to make appropriate or even empowering decisions. And that helps us to find inspiration in life without being uh, negatively affected by outside influences. And I love, you know, Dr. Ford, that you talked about uh, negativity and, and, and staying away from negativity. We all need to do that where we can, certainly. And a good way to, to do that is by living out our core values. Um, I mean, obviously, though, we we'll need to know what those are and taking control of our lives starts by understanding what our core values are. And we talk a lot about core values here in on passive and you did as well, you know, to, to get that trajectory, that plan, that, that, that vision for life that, that you uh, spoke about here. So it's good to clarify, you know, what our core values are. It's good to understand what our beliefs are because they shape us and give us a blueprint, so to speak for, uh, living out our, our, our personal truth. Um, I also like, Dr. Ford, that you talked about our ability or the fact that it happens, perhaps, you know, that we attract most of the time those people that are like us. Um, we, we find that, that people that, that, that come into our lives for whatever reason, if if they have attribute, if they have characteristics that that we're not necessarily in agreement with, then these folks that we've attracted to us are simply showing us something within ourselves that probably needs to have a little work done. Um, and in this, we're we're saying that what we put out in life, we're going to get back one way or another, right? I mean, that's the, your your you're going to reap what we sow. Right. And in that, we know that in some way, when we attract people into our lives, they reflect something of who we are. And when we look at that, I mean, that's a good word for for a lot of people right now, mm. because Dr. Ford, you also talked about um, how we want to attract those people that are like who we want to be. And in doing that, we lift ourselves as well as putting out good things that will also help others. And when we recognize things in folks that uh, perhaps are not exactly like we want, and, and we can recognize them and, and then recognize in ourselves a little bit of that and change that, then that allows us to kind of move in in a pattern that that lifts us more with going with our goals and at the same time when we change those negative things in us or those maybe they're not even negative maybe they're just undesirable or unwanted then that will also move us into a realm where those folks that are negative or those folks that cause us some sort of a grief or something, they'll just kind of fall by the wayside or they will exit our lives in some way, you know, one way or another. 
and, and the being aware of how all that works allows us to be more clear on who we are, right? And in doing this, uh, we can be um, a lot more flexible. We can be more on track in the flow, a lot more balanced with our own lives. And that gives us the control back that the whole, the whole conversation started on. So, you know, when we get in that area where we're lifting ourselves and we're helping others to move along on our journey, then even when things don't go as planned, then then life is still pretty good for us because it's it's all a journey and it's all a part of just becoming uh, the best versions of ourselves. So, thank you so very very much. I appreciate everything, Doctor Ford, that you've said, and there was a lot of gold nuggets in here for for people that that want to to want to go back and listen to this again. Thank you. Thank you very exactly. much, Jeffrey. Thank you, Doctor Bill. Thank you so much. Thank yes, you. about going back to listen to this whole Ibina again. Um, I think the floor is open for us family members to respond to Dr. T's four uh, core values and points, how to control ourselves. Um, the floor is open, whether you can to, would like to respond, how it has touched uh, us, you can raise your hand. And while you consider to raise your hand, Dr. Benny, your name is mentioned by Dr. T, <laughs> you know, and uh, if you would like to say a few words while the rest uh, get ready to raise their hand to share, including those who are in the attendees uh, platform, maybe you can write something and we will make you a speaker. After Dr. Benny, uh, yep, let's see Johnny or Debbie can chip in as the host team. All right. Can I proceed? Yes. Oh, all right. Wow, wow, wow. Dr. T, Dr. T. That's how we call her. We call her Dr. T. Um, you you know how uh, Queen Debbie would say, you nail it! <laughs> <laughs> oh, first, I want to say good morning, good afternoon, good evening to my queens and kings. Um, I want to take this special moment to thank our Heavenly Father for bringing you Amen. and I together. Um, I, I noticed Dr. T, I, he love, she loves God. Well, I know that uh, without God, you and I, we are nothing because he created you and I in his image. Despite the fact that I pray all the time, I say, Father, we do have people out there who hate my gods, but please t still take care of them anyway. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you see? They, they, they really hate me, but it's okay. I want to thank our Heavenly Father for bringing somebody to all of us our visionary who loves us so much that he decided to share his vision to you and I. And he also wants that you and I should go out there and share this vision. There are a lot of brand ambassadors or humans out there who are suffering at the moment. Now that Unpassive has launched. Are you guys excited? Anyway, before I proceed, I am happy. Brother Jeffrey. Dr. Bill, I am happy. I'm excited. Anyway, <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. I would say remarkable presentation, Dr. T. Thank you so much. Now, this statement, you say, free yourself from toxic relationship. <laughs> You're 100% correct. And you made, a, you, you made another statement. Uh, why do I attract terrible men. <laughs> Me too. It's not <laughs> only you, Dr. T. I'm not lying. It is not only you, but we do learn from our mistakes. Hmm. And that is why I don't play anymore. I am Hallelujah. focused onto my Jehovah God. Hallelujah. I am focused with unpassive and nobody plays with unpassive when I'm around. Anybody say anything about unpassive, don't say it in front of me. Do not. I will deal with you. 
And I'm serious. God wants to give us perfect relationship. Yeah, he does. But I want you guys to know the importance of our Heavenly Father. He is so important and he wants us to do the right thing. Despite the fact that we make mistakes every day, then we just have to say, Father, forgive me. I will try my best not to make these mistakes. I have made a lot of mistakes. Uh, nobody is perfect in this world. Nobody. I know that. Nobody. No, except Jesus. <laughs> right. Um, Dr. T, I, I am so proud of you. You say, get mm -hmm. rid of bad rituals. I was just trying to find out what this one really means about the bad rituals. Is it okay, please? Yes. When I talk about bad rituals, it's, it's, it's the same. It's almost like the habit, but a ritual is something that we continuously repeat. It's like we make it um, a religion, so to speak. You know what I'm saying? It's something that we dedicate it to without even thinking about it. You know, uh, uh, a bad ritual might be, like I said, like I said, you know, staying up all night. It's a habit, but it's also a ritual because we just, we feel, we're not going to go to bed. That's just who we are. That's what we do. So it's a ritual in the sense that that's who we've been doing. We've been doing that since we were little. We may, maybe when you were a baby and your mother and father allowed you to stay up late. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, so it comes to a ritual with you. You don't believe in going to bed early. It's like you're out, you're a night owl. You heard people say, I'm a night person. So it becomes a ritual. It becomes more like a religion. That type of thing, something that they worship, something that they just it's in their DNA. So that's like that's like a ritual. That may be a bad example, but that's what I can think of on top of my head right now. Anybody else can jump in, Dr. Bill, anybody else who may want to help them, but a bad ritual, just something that you continuously do that's more like a religion to you. It's like you're not gonna stop doing it, you don't see anything wrong with it, you know. Uh it's just it's, it's a it's a it's, be, it's beyond a habit, so to speak. Because you know, a habit is something that you could possibly stop, maybe in 14, 21 days. But a ritual is something that is embedded. You know what I'm saying? It's a ritual. You know, like you like you know, like uh, if you go to another country, they have rituals. You know what I'm saying? It may not be in, in your eyes, in my eyes, it may not look look right and be right, but it's who they are. It's part of their DNA. You know what I'm saying? It's just it's just what makes them up as people. But it doesn't make it right. It's not godly. It may be a hindrance to their progress, but they don't realize it. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes, please. It does. Okay. Okay. Thank you. One more before I can allow Queen Debbie to proceed. One, <laughs> uh, you you stated that surround yourself with like-minded people. Oh yes, I will. Well, to me, I don't play, especially if you are not an unpassivian. Don't talk to me. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> okay. No, no, I, I, no. Okay, let me let me explain. Any man who wants me to go out with me, if you don't join on passive, I will not be with you. Period. <laughs> if I tell you about on passive, the importance of on passive, the products or the solutions that we have, and you say, eh, hey, hey, you expect me to be with you? Are you out of your mind? I will not. Anyway, <laughs> let me stop. Thank you. Okay, now I have to make a comment on that. Now, see, gentlemen, anybody on Deep Dive, Dream Team, all the other platforms, that now you heard what she said, right, Oh, Ashton? Okay, now, if you're looking at Dr. <laughs> Benny to be your life partner, you better be getting, you, I'm telling you, you better, don't play with that. That's why I always pick with Dr. Benny, because I know where she's coming from. It's her heart. It's her heart, and I have no problem with that, Dr. Benny. Amen. <laughs> no Thank problem. You. Thank you, Doctor. There you go. See, you better be, you you better be on board, with all, and you better be bringing in some money too. Oh yes, <laughs> you, you expect me not be squandering your money, <laughs> Doctor Doctor T. You expect me to be with somebody who doesn't have money? You have to walk <laughs> no, off. I don't play. I and know I'm, you I'm, don't. See, Doctor T. I, I know that I know that they are rec recording this. This is very <laughs> important to all the women. Be careful. Be careful. Do not waste your breath with any man who does not want to walk. You don't want to kill yourself for a man. Are you out of your mind? Oh, I'm sorry. Please, Dr. Can <laughs> Debbie proceed? I'm sorry. Before before, De before Debbie go, uh, proceeds, may I say this, you know, uh, going back with two, just on a more serious side, Dr. Benny and I, we kind of play back, like that back and forth. I know she's serious, you know, but uh, you, you want to be around people 
we've talked about coming out of toxicity. You want to be around people who are going where you're going. So even though she says she wants a man from on passive, that makes sense. That makes sense. Have you ever have you ever looked at people? I mean, I don't know anything about your background, Dr. Bill or Jeffrey or you know anybody like that. But if you have if you have a spouse, think about where you met them. You probably met your spouse. Most people, I, I don't I don't know, but most people meet their spouses in an arena where they spend the most time. Maybe maybe on campus. Maybe if, if you're in college, you may have met your spouse. Uh, in college, you may have different, you may have different uh, uh, studies, different degrees you're working on, but you're in the same environment. You were in a learning environment. If you're a bar hopper, you probably met your spouse in a bar. You see, you see where I'm going with that? The negative part. So oftentimes, you're going to attract someone based on the area or the environment that you spend the most time. So that's what she's saying. So if she's an on passiveness, and she's and she's the queen of on passive, the first lady, doesn't it make sense? Does she want someone who's attending webinars, who's getting the same information that she's getting, that has the same drive that she has? Doesn't that make sense? Why would she want to get with a man out there who's never heard of On Passive, has no desire to be a part of On Passive, has no desire to help her with On Passive, has no desire to, to support anything she's doing? That doesn't make sense. She's in the same boat she was in the first, and, and that just makes sense. That's, that makes a lot of sense. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you're single, you know maybe you, maybe we should follow that. You know, just believe God to meet someone you know who may be on on passive, someone that has the same vision as you, someone that's going in the same direction, and someone has a heart for Mister Ashford Farah's vision. That you can start right there. So, I'll give it over to uh, Queen Debbie. Thank you. Makes sense. Makes sense to me. Oh, wow. I cannot follow any, all of you <laughs> who have already spoken. Good evening and good morning to everyone. It's um, I try not to speak when I realize that it's getting to time to end. I try not to put my hand up, but there's still time so I can speak today. Let me first of all thank Dr. T. <clears throat> I know how busy you are, and each time I try to get you to talk somewhere, you check your calendar first. But thank you so much for creating time to be with us this morning, our morning and evening for Singapore. We truly appreciate the talk today. Mm. But before I make my comment, I want to first of all uh, remind everyone, I think I'm re-quoting Dr. Benny. I didn't know she was going to say this. One thing brought us together, our love for humanity. And um, we are friends here now, thanks to who? Mr. Ash, because he shared his dream with us. Without his dream, we would not be here. We're living his dream through his, he, dre he dreamt and acted on that dream. And that dream brought us together. And we have become global friends, global families. Mm -hmm. regardless of what happens when i think about my day i think of which webinars i'm going to attend depending on where i am and what time of day isn't that amazing that's amazing to me that's how i see it and dr t back to your four items today i know dr benny will reverse them thank god first but you say last is best i agree with last being best and the, uh, I wanted to ask a question about the toxic relationships because it is something you personally do not pick on your own. You're attracted to somebody not knowing what the outcome will be and with that outcome becomes toxic. How do you shy away from it? It is not easy, especially if that chemistry was there initially. You cannot just walk away. I have seen people like that, they say, I know, I know what's going on. And I think that some, with time, change will happen, but change doesn't come. It just gets from fry pan to fire the way it gets from bad to worse. So that never really helps us. Where do you go to learn how to avoid and eliminate those people who are toxic in life? Okay, let me share this with you. This is a very profound statement. I want you to listen to me very carefully, Queen Debbie. You may not be able to help who you are attracted to. 
like you said, the chemistry might be there. Beautiful smile, tall, dark, handsome, pretty, whatever it may be, opposite sex, whatever it may be. Smart, you know, a charisma, whatever all those things that, that, that attract you. But I say you may not be able to help who you fall in love with or who you're attracted to, but you can help who you stay attracted to. That's where the strength comes in. That's where it comes in about you knowing your self-worth. Because anytime a woman or a man, and men are abused, are abused too. Don't just think it's a woman thing. Women are not the only ones to be are abused, okay? Uh, and women are the only ones who go who go through these different uh uh uh, uh shall I say these scenarios with being with the wrong person. It's not it's men too. Men cry in the dark. Yes, men cry in the dark. They go home and they're abused by women. Okay? What you do is that's where it comes from you taking care of you from the inside. When you build up your self-esteem, when you know your self-worth. And that's where it comes in being around people of like mind, being around people that celebrate you. And then listening to people who love you. When somebody says to you, hey, Debbie, you know, I mean, I know you're happily married, so I'm not talking to you per se, but I'm just giving you this example. You know, hey, Debbie, you know, so I see so I know he's a nice guy, he has a beautiful smile, he has a good job, but I'm looking at something that you're not seeing because you're because your nose is wide open, as they say. That's the expression when a person is really in love, the nose is wide open. You know that. But the point is that. Listen to people who you know are in your corner, all right? And if a woman or a man stays in a toxic relationship, it's because they have not done key number one. They have not taken the time to build themselves up. Stay in God's word, okay? Be around spiritual things. Look at spiritual tapes. Look at power. Go, go to buy, buy empowerment books that talk about self-esteem building. Buy a big, look at uh, uh, uh podcast and webinar, you know, begin to just build yourself up. It's a process. It's not going to happen overnight. You didn't fall in love. It, you know, being in love is is, is, is going from, from step to step, level to level. I got that. So it's going to take a minute. But in the meantime, if you see signs, if the person might be narcissistic, okay, they might just be the self-serving. They, the, the person that, that they're abusive, they always want to try to intimidate you. Those are signs. When you allow yourself to stay in those things, then you're letting yourself know that you don't love you. You don't love you. And one of the commandments, one of the two greatest commandments God said, he said to love God with all your heart and all your soul and then who and love your neighbor as who as you love you. You've got to learn to love you. You can't even love your neighbor until you love you. And that's an area, I don't care how rich you become with on passive. I don't care what level you go to in on passive. If you don't learn to love you, it's going to be a cycle. So to answer your question is you may not be able to help who you fall in love with or who you may be attracted to, but you can help who you stay attracted to. It'd be man and woman or friendship or whatever. Just back off. Learn to love you. Get to a place where you just stay enough is enough. And it's going to take some time. And it's going to be hard sometimes. But you can do it. When I say you, I don't mean you per se, but anybody listening to this that they may pertain to, the YouTube channel, whatever, you can do this. But it starts with being in love with you learn to fall in love with yourself. And that might mean spending time alone, away from other people, just spending that time alone and building yourself up. Your love is like a muscle, okay? You start off with smaller weights and you work your way up to, 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 to uh, larger weights. It's the same thing with your heart. It's the same thing with your emotions. Begin to feed it with positive things. And then you, want, you won't want to be around anything that wants to hurt you or destroy who, who you are and, and hinder the person that God wants you to become. I hope I answered that question. Yes, you did. Thank you very much. So what I need to do is work more on the inner skills. So yes, aspect of it should happen. So yes. Said, oh, I, <clears throat> I, um, this is for Brad Jeffrey, probably unrelated, but, I listened to your video on leading the way through change, uh, Brother Jeffrey. Is that what you have there? Did that have something like connected to what uh, Dr. T just shared? Leading the way through change. Yeah. Uh, by the way, good morning, Deb. It's good certainly morning. good to see you guys here. Um, I, I'm loving. I'm loving the the interaction here with with Dr. Ford because she is she's so spot on with so many things and the advice, uh, the counsel that she's offering us here is is a uh, a very plain speak kind of 
practical uh, solution to a lot of things that are going on. So, but yes, leading, 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 uh, or, or changing, leading through change. You know, there's so many things that has just rung true with what she says, and in particular, one of the things she was just talking about that I've had experience with personally, where relationships would take a little bit of a turn and sometimes they're so subtle that you don't realize they've taken a negative turn until you're way into it and then it's like wow you know how did we get to this point but if you are aware of your own beliefs and aware of who you are right your core at your core you know and value who you are then you are going to be sensitive to those changes that go against that and there's been many times with relationships in my in my family uh, and at work where somebody would come at me uh, and I say come at me I mean in a negative way and they would assault me either verbally or emotionally whatever not you know pick up a hammer and knock me in the head but they would say offhand comments or they would be judgmental or something like that and I'm sensitive to that because I know who I am and I know my worth, like what she was saying, what Dr. Ford was saying. And I would immediately say, whoa, time out. You know, I don't know where that's coming from. I don't deserve that. You have no right to speak to me that way. And we need to get this fixed. And when you talk to people like that, but, and, you, and you don't do it in, a, in, in an adversarial way, it, it kind of shocks them too and they go, whoa, wait a minute, okay, I was lashing. More times than not, you'll find that people come back to you a few minutes or maybe the next day and say, you know what, I am so sorry. I, you're right, I was, I was acting out and I was lashing out because I felt this way about this and I projected that at you and I had no business doing that. And in, do, and in doing this, then you can bring your relationship back into uh, the trajectory where it should be should have gone. So when when you find that you have people in your life that treat you in unwanted ways or disrespectful ways, what we don't really necessarily want to do is to jump down their throat or com be combative or adversarial in our response. And I think that a lot of this has to do with offering a response as opposed to a reaction. And in doing that, we can actually, um, we, can, we can give direction to the type of change in our lives. What happened? Hmm? Yeah, me too. So let's... What happened? I can't hear Brother Jeffrey. Did, is that only me or is that everybody? I can't hear him too, so let's stay on. I can't hear him too. Oh, you, you say you can well, or you cannot? Leaders, I, cannot, I, cannot I cannot. Okay. I cannot hear him. As leaders, well, can you hear we me? need to be aware Yes, I can hear you. Where okay, we well, go. May I piggyback on what he said? Well, while we he's coming back, back on. He's coming oh, he back he's on. Coming back on? Okay. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so I, I don't even know if that, that helped you with it. Uh, Debbie, did that answer? Or I kind of went around my elbow getting to my thumb there. No. But I, I'm loving the interaction in here. And I, I, I'm loving what's going on. So thank you for, for inviting me and making me a part of it. May, may I piggyback May I piggyback on what uh, Jeffrey said? Is it feasible for me to do that? I, I'm not trying to uh, go against protocol. But yes, sure. Okay. Sure, Luca. Mm. Let, let me let me explain something. Okay, let me put my. Uh, can you all see me? I'm sorry. I'm just, just being rude. I don't mean to be in my camera. Wow. Okay, I'm trying to trying to put my camera on. It's not working. Okay, I apologize, but my camera won't come back on for some reason. But you all can hear me. Okay. Uh, what I would wanted to say is, please, when I when I we talk about toxicity. Don't confuse that with a person who, you know, you know uh, teeth and tongue fall out, okay? 
you are here. Everybody is human. We all have shortcomings. I don't want you to feel that because you have a confrontation with someone that that person is not for you. You're gonna, you know, uh, my mother used to always. You, you heard the book. You heard the book. Men are from men are from Mars and women are from Venus. That's true. You know, we, we're, we're two different uh, genders. You're not gonna think alike. Even in your friendships, you know, one of my best friends who's on the line right now, we always have disagreements. Okay, we don't always see eye to eye, and that's okay. So I don't want you to feel like, oh, we had a disagreement. That's not that person's not for me. No, I'm not saying that. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about people who are self-centered, they're narcissistic, okay, they're selfish, you know, they don't compromise, everything has to be their way or no way. Those are the signs, but don't mistake a person who may come into your life that is part of your life purpose just because they may say, I don't agree with you. Don't get all bit out of shape about that. That's not something to, to break up about, and people do that. You know, people do that. I don't, I don't agree. They feel like a person has to go along with everything you say and do for them to be for you. That's not true because maybe because you have to have opposition. You have to have some opposition in order for you all to jail and to be at some point be on one accord. Does that make sense? You've got to have some kind of opposition because my, I should be able to voice how I feel and my opinion and you should be able to do the same. But I don't want you all to take this to a don't take this to a level where you've been like, well, I don't like this person, or they're not good for me because they don't agree with me, or they're always disagree with me. No, when a person's too confrontational, that's not good. But it's okay to have confrontation as long as it's a healthy confrontation. At the end of the day, you want to be able to be on one accord so that you can walk together. The word of God says, how can two agree? How can you walk together unless you agree? So at some point you're going to agree, but if you never agree. That's the time to say, okay, maybe this relationship is not good for me. But we all have faults, and we're all going to fall short. But it doesn't mean that that person is not for you. Please do not get that twisted. Don't, 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 don't uh, find yourself getting rid of people because you don't always okay. see eye to eye. That's not a reason to do that. Good. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Good. Thank you I for the clarification. Yes, yes. Thank you for clarifying that. That is a good point. Uh, anyone who would like to share, raise their hand, say something as to how tonight's session has enriched us and how you would like to share your feelings with us. Anyone? Anyone? I think uh, while waiting for another one or two more person uh, to share, yes. Mr. Mabel, I uh, see your brother Raj's hand has been up. Raj, is it? Okay, okay. Yes, Raj. yes please share. Yes. Uh, you are muted. You are muted. Yes. Uh, Brother Raj, we cannot hear you. We cannot hear you. No, now you're muted. Still cannot hear. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I just hold up and. Okay. We can't hear you. Can't hear you. Brother Raj, we cannot hear you. Maybe you want to close your video and maybe the reception will be better. Raj, you want to close your video and just speak? Okay. okay. Ah, yeah, that's better, I think. Uh, but but um, you're muted. The... Okay. You are muted. You are muted. You are muted. <coughs> While we are 
waiting for Brother Raj to come. If you are coming back on. If you are on, coming back on. Yes, yes, I am ready. Oh, uh, can you okay. hear me? Okay. Okay. Ha. Ultimately, I nailed it. Yeah. Thank you so much. This is Raj Damod from India. Good evening. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. What a great moment, especially. I have some all your your master of brain box, uh, international and national dignitaries. And uh, today, what a monumental session. Tremendous, terrific, mind blowing, rocking. I love it. Yes, how to control your life, bro. That's not easy task. I want to read her book. Today, I search uh, this book in the Amazon and I am going to order this book. What a what a massive book! I like to thanks from my core of heart, Dr. Tunisia Afford, a great, uh, a man of letters and uh, magnetic personality. Okay, we lost him completely. And uh, I just want to share a little bit uh, about about uh, what Dr. Benny mentioned. About... I can't hear anything. This is Dr. T. I can't not hear anything now. Okay. Can you hear me? Hear. Cannot hear me? Yeah, okay, I hear someone now. Integrity, and, dedication, uh, devotion, I, I commitment, just... <laughs> integrity, and loyalty for the institution, for the system. And if you want to excel, if you want to Someone get speaking, your target I, I of your life, it. if you Raj want to be speaking. happy, Raj if you want to achieve speaking. your life, my dear friends, I can't set hear a him. goal, that command, that command your thoughts, liberate your energy, and inspire your thoughts, my dear friends. Because expert, expert on the science of success know that brain is a goal-seeking organism. Whatever goal you give to your subconscious mind, it will work day and night. Uh, one day, you will be rocking. One day, you will be getting a huge success in your life, my dear friends. So that's a massive <coughs> message today. Thank you, Raj. Thank you. Yes. Uh, Mabel, might, uh, yes. we have Mr. Pankaj who want to speak. Yes. Mr. Pankaj. Yes. You Pankaj can from thank, India. You, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Your mic. Yeah. Yes. 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 Thank you, uh, Jenny, ma'am. And uh, I'm very so happy. Hello, everyone. I'm Pankaj Patle from India. Uh, greeting the I belong to you. We are a uh, one I don't speak in English. Well, still, I will try make you understand my English. I love you very She's much. Completely so you, rocking a brain box am, and unparalleled. She's a magician personality, I can say. Because <laughs> if you want Hello? to sustain in this world, my dear friends, Charles Darwin always said, survival of fittest and according to demand of the hour, you have to be, you have Queen to Mabel. be proactive. Queen Mabel, can you stop rush? In your Please. mind, be creating a positive vibes all, all the times. Then you can get your Come target. And then unless, you you yes, can. I can do. I always remember the USA President Barack Obama spirit. What a dynamic spirit. What a philosophy. Yes, I can do. Oh, I can do change it. the USA. That was really heroic yeah. message. And today, in this platform, Dr. Tunisia Ford, a great, amazing personality, just is rocking and just inspired a beautiful way. That's amazing. That fabulous, stupendous, my dear friends. That is creating a new positive vibes, new radiance, a new blazing in our life. And Mr. As, he has given us such wonderful platforms on passive in our life. Thank you, Queen Mabel. Really? Brother Pankanji was talking and then Raj disturbed him. Yes. Doesn't yes. make sense. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Uh, and and uh, otherwise, yes. 
Uh, my my yes, wife Pankaj. is clear. Yes. My wife is clear. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Doctor Benny. Well, well, yeah. Uh, how long time the uh, see the screen and oh, connect session? And the uh, Jerry Morgan sir, very very good. India, namaste. Jerry Morgan sir, India, ma namaste, and all you Indian founders, very well night. And so I am speaking English a uh, uh, little, little, but I love my on page you. I I am very happy that the I speak you that you are this. We also hold a uh, one connect meeting in India, and also made a record. We are the holding meeting connect con constantly, continuously. And uh, 24, yes, so 26 April 2023, in the name of King Tiger India. And now we are giving full training of OES on PC ecosystem. I want you to also come to our session and give new information. I request all of you. You uh, our session in invite everyone and I am very so so happy and first time our session join in this hour. Thanks, thanks, Jenny, ma'am, and very very thanks. Uh, today the my uh, opportunity giving the opportunity in uh, your session speak, but little little speak in English. I will try uh, speak in English uh, and first time uh, speak. This uh, platform, I am so very happy. And Raj brother, very very well doing the work, and very appreciate. And Mr. Kumaran, how are you? <laughs> yeah, wow, my thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank and, you, uh, thank you. One question, uh, Dr. Bill Williams, sir, very well. <laughs> I am very uh, glad. I am very namaste. <laughs> namaste, namaste. Thank you, thank you. And I put the our session link. Uh, give me permission. Chat box. Jenny, ma'am, our yeah. session. Uh, put up the link in chat box. Give me yes. permission to you. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pankaj. Yeah. We love you. And yeah, welcome, welcome. Do visit us again. Yeah. And your English is improving. Very good. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for trying. And let's learn together. Thank you. So Mabel, you want to call on oh. Miss Patricia? Uh, Abdi. Yes. Abdi have got the hands yeah. raised oh, okay. and then Patricia. And then um, Patricia. After that, can I read the, I had a call from uh, Rose Bereave from Jamaica. She she had a response to Dr. T's uh, message in the chat, and she wanted mm. me to read it out. Yes. So when I just wanted to mention that when it's time, I'll do it for her. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Abdi. Eh? Uh, Hello, everyone. Yes. Hi. I'm, I'm, yes. I'm gonna be here. Yeah, I think I can hear. Hello, you may be chatting. Hello, global fashion on Pacific. Malaysia, Singapore, great webinar. Good to be here again another Thursday. Uh, greeting to my leader, Dr. Phil Williams, and my good friend Jeffrey, and all the other leaders, Mr. Debbie and Jean. I can't name you all of you. We mm. love you. Anyway, I, I just want to say thank you for the really, I was listening all along on the background. Uh, I'm on the on duty, but I'm also under the weather so uh, it was beautiful Dr. Tunisia I, I remember last time she talked here and also tonight and we're looking forward for her next session as well we still have that whole left but what I think from her talk tonight was the most important things apart from you know your relationship with the with the Almighty is also the main thing after that is who you connected with, you know, the influencers, you know, those who not really helping you in any way to be not be able to fulfill about 
the purpose that uh, the doctor was talking about. Uh, I, I have my early years, I have experienced the same situations where I was distracted many of my uh, ability to succeed in many ways. But then luckily I, I, I turn around and then I, I, caught, I caught the vision and then, you know, go to the right direction. But I can understand and then that might be related to my, you know, as a teenager, you know, we always go up and downs. But it's exactly that's how I also advise my kids now. Uh, your friend who you hang around with, it must be something that you, someone that you can gain from something. You know? uh, someone that you can gain from something, whether it's... Uh, uh, academical or whether it's a uh, entrepreneurship or whether it's uh, a religious value or any experience don't just go your level go higher level someone who's better than you so i think the negativity from the the bad influences is is what i really like about her conversation tonight also uh yes there are so many people who really didn't fulfill the purpose they were alive so many people are in the grave by not reaching even as small as the percentage of their you know ability to to, to yeah. impact humanity or any otherwise or to themselves you know or to their families and that that was also a touching point and i appreciate uh and looking forward to her next session here and yeah, that's my contribution. It was excellent, absolutely, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Abdi. Jenny, is it a Diva? Uh, yeah, we have uh, Divya, Divya Kumar, yeah. We get Dr. Uh, Patricia to speak first. Uh, yeah, after Can Patricia, uh, Mr. Divya. Yeah. Then Debbie. Ms. Yeah, Miss Patricia. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Loud and clear. Hello. Yeah. Hi. You, hi. Can you hear me? Okay. Hello. Am I audible to you? Thank you very much, uh, Doctor T, for oh. uh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Where are we now? Hello, Miss Patricia. Patricia, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Again, yeah. Good evening to everybody. Thank you so much, Doctor T, for sharing your heartfelt experience. Um, your first point that you made, working on your inner self, you you brought up the topic about letting go of the past mistake. But a lot of us not only uh, not able to let go of our past mistake. A lot of us, I find, they stick on to the past glory and they don't come to a point where they have to unlearn what they have learned in the past and relearn what's happening now. So they, we tend to have um, live in the past, or especially past, past glory. Some of us that had very high position and, and done well in life and then they come to a point where they have uh, look, dropped down or whatever, they don't uh, come to terms that this is a different situation and they have to pick themselves and learn new things again. So that's what I like to point out. And the other thing about the number two point that you said about um, let, um, free yourself from toxic relationship. Actually, we have to have a certain amount of self-respect on uh, with us so that when we know when people treat us below what we, we call ourselves as self-respect. Yes we can actually walk away. We must also learn to differentiate how to handle the situation and not handle the person. And uh, this is what are the two things I would say to this thing. And uh, also for the, uh, back again to the first one is our reputation is different to our character. People can have a lot of reputation about us because of one incident that happened and somebody can be telling bad things about you or negative things about you or whatever based on one situation but our character is what we are so these are the two things that i would like to differentiate 
Mm. And thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to share. Sure. Thank you, thank you, Patricia. So, Jeannie, now is Diva. If he hello, is, no, 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 sorry, no, not Diva. Uh, is he hearing? If not, then Debbie. I think if, Debbie, would you like to share what you, what your friend, what Rose wrote? Hello, hello. Okay, Diva is coming in. Oh, he is. Okay, Debbie, Debbie. Then yeah, we'll... Thank you very much, uh, Sister Mabel. So, uh, Queen Rose Bereave, she really wanted to speak, but she's at work and she could not unmute to say that she wanted me to do this. That's why she called. She wrote in the chat that every negative or toxic behavior comes from a spirit of darkness. It's never about the person. It's mm. the spirit operating in or around them. The word of God says, our wealth, our warfare is not, sorry, it's not canal. So look beyond what you see with the natural mm. eye. Pray and connectivity to the word of God is very important to identify the toxic toxicity before it becomes destructive to you. Deliverance is very important to rid you of these spirits and might have attached to your life. You might get away from the person, but the spirit remains. So that's from uh, Rosebury from Jamaica and that message was after Dr. T's uh, presentation. Mm. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Sister Mabel. Sure. She wanted to make sure that <laughs> we know yes. that she was here, but because of work, she could not speak. Okay. I think most people know her. She used to be with us, but her work schedule, she could no longer on, you know, speak while at work. So back mm. to you, Sister Mabel. Thank you. Yes. Back to you, Jeannie. Jeannie, can you call Diva? I think... Ginny is gone. Ginny is gone. Diva Hello, is gone. Am I here? Yeah, Diva. Hello. Yes. 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 Am I audible to you? Yes. Hello. Diva. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes, yes. Yes, okay, you can okay. speak now. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, I, first of all, I just want to thank to all the panelists, those who are present here, because your valuable presence is always are giving us the boost of energy to everybody. And uh, that was the session. What was the hilarious session? It was really uh, astonishing to each and everyone because uh, here we, we learn the values, the all the, you know, are regarding things which are really important for upbringing the personality as well as it also, you know, taught about that how we can accelerate our life as well as to the society. So all these things are really meaningful and really astonishing. And uh, today, uh, Mr. Reno Ford has really said very meaningfully and he told each and everything. It is really uh, gives us a boosting energy and uh, how uh, on passive is really assisting in terms of you know various things like uh, in terms of you know personality grooming or the you know other factors like uh, how we assist to the humanity and everything is really important and uh, I'm sure that through the on passive and uh, their you know uh, respective and art of the community will really go ahead and I'm really thankful because it's really touching and it gives us. Uh, various, you know, other sorts of, you know, uh, ingredients which really fulfill our life through the, you know, uh, imagination and everything. So thank you very much for all of you once again, especially Dr. Williams, and, and, and uh, you know, Pratia and uh, Mabel Chan, everybody, is, uh, even Kumaran and all the distinguished personality, they are, they are really lovely and uh, never forget about that. Uh, what the you know, Jeffrey has said is really uh, uh, 
you know, uh, heart touching to. So thank you once again that you have given the opportunity to say something in front of you all. Thank you very much and uh, good night to all of you. We are so need to wait. We are really going ahead. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Divya. Thank you for your for your kind words and all, all your feedback. Thank you. Sister Jini, uh, can you hear me? I am ready now. Uh, here, yeah, back to Raj. you. Back to you. Okay. Um, I think let's see who else would uh, say, but I would like to uh, add a little bit to what Dr. Benny mentioned about choosing a partner or something like that. You know, I think in, in our Christian context, uh, Dr. T or, you know, Dr. Bill, it's, it's about being, not being unequally yoked, to be unequally yoked. And, uh, and uh, I think we know Dr. Benny enough, you know, that we are not being discriminative. We're not being discriminative, you know. And uh, I think as Dr. T says, if you have a godly character, we will know how to choose our partner and I think particularly when we were strong in in what uh, Dr. Benny was saying I think what she meant is really more choosing the right partner choosing the closest of friend to be of equally yoke and especially uh, <clears throat> yep. a relationship where there is building where there is peace and harmony yeah. I think if you are equally yoked you will build on your passion, you will build on your strength. Yeah. So uh, it, it does not mean that we do not befriend <clears throat> non on perseverance because the 1.4 million of us are just the beginning. Yes. More will be joining us. So Dr. Benny, your pool of selection is going to be wider and wider and bigger and bigger not just the 1.4 or the 50 of us here, you know. And uh, uh, with, with Dr. T saying that, you know, Dr. T said something about we need to have social skills, right? So social skill means that we will embrace everyone. And, uh, uh, but it's just when it comes to choosing a life partner, choosing a very close friend to walk together, we want someone of the same belief. So, so that is really uh, the crust of what the, the value of what we were choosing ourselves, you know. And um, let's see, let's see who else wants to add. If not, we may want to. Uh, yes, Gina, yes. Is there is there anyone else? Can you hear me? Yes, mm -hmm. Mr. Can you hear me? This is Raj. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, you are audible. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Can you? Uh, ultimately, okay? I'm in. Yeah. I'm in point. Yeah, we heard you. I think we heard head. you halfway. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Mm. Uh, good evening. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. What a big moment, festive moment. First of all, I have to you all uh, the galaxy of intellectual of on passive <laughs> in your hearts. I can't. Yes. Hear, I can't hear anything. Yeah. Oh, Today, what a monumental. Classic. I can't hear Mabel. Hearing. And terrific, tremendous season. Just like a storm, just like a big hurricane. I enjoyed a lot. Computer or... Yes. Yeah. Uh, I have some uh, Dr. Tunisia, a great motivator and yes. uh, uh, awesome writer. Today, I search her book in Amazing and I have ordered uh, that book because I wanted to go through it. That mm. is creating a new dynamic, uh, positive vibes, my dear friends. Yes. Ultimately, this is our body, okay? Our brain is a great treasure, mm -hmm. a, great, a great asset for our life. If we want to achieve any goal, first of all, we have to develop golden skill quality like sublime character, integrity, fire of always, dynamic, proactive, a positive mindset, and believe in the taking action quality. Avoid the toxic people. Make a group of successful people, my dear friends. These are all big guns in your life, which can give an exemplary role 
and can make your target easy to achieve. He can do miracles. Each and every founding member is just like a heroic, like a king's queen. They have fabulous stamina, indomitable spirit. Today, what we are seeing within five years of on passive saga of journey, that is tremendous journey, unmatchable, unparalleled. How this is possible? This is possible due to belief, take in action, golden mindset, and diamond heart, and and abolish the old negative barriers. This is the power of on passive. This is the power of sparkness. And today, she created a wonderful millions of sparkness in our mind, in our thought. I always used to say that, my dear friends, if you want to be happy, if you want to get your target, command your command your thought. Give command your thought. Give the positive energy and chase your dream. Ultimately, one day you'll be flyer. You must come up with a flying colors in your life, my dear friends. What the Mr. Ash is doing, this is a massive. Just he's a touching. He's a winning the hearts of each and every founding member, each and every people of this planet. And on pass is just roaring. And today I have saw our Singapore, Malaysia Global host team, they have conducted such a awesome, unparalleled, splendid, fabulous session and how to be a good leader and how to control your life as a, as a good designer. Now, we are a great designer of our life, my dear friends, and what we wanted in our life, we can do it. Yes, I want to quote always. I, I am very crazy of Dr. What, uh, Barack Obama. Once upon a time, during president election of USA, he said, my dear friends, USA, brothers and sisters, you can do. Yes, I can do. It means it can be always a superpower for getting, for serving the humanity, a beacon of humanity. And the same, same trend, Mr. As Mufara is building and reshaping the planet. That's amazing. That is a monumental, tremendous, my dear friends. And thank you so much for giving such a wonderful opportunity. Yes, we can do. And uh, don't forget, here I am going to announce tomorrow, on passive Bharat International Group, inviting top class, a maestro, brand box, top class. Internet, 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 internet is getting a bit. Mr. Jaffrey Morlock, sir. Jaffrey Morlock, sir. Is the our internet is getting a bit and unstable. Tomorrow? Tomorrow, and uh, you must, you are most welcome there in uh, at the uh, right time. And link will be shared with you, my dear friends. And uh, I request uh, Dr. Bill Williams, sir, please uh, give your auspicious, priceless moment with us. And uh, and uh, already I have message to you. Uh, please confirm on 10th October uh, we wanted to organize your session on the Bharat International uh, Group platform. So please. Uh, you're cordially invited and accept our invitation, sir. Yeah. Okay. Please, thank sir. you. Thank you, yeah. Yeah. thank you, Raj. Thank you, Raj. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Ginny, shall we end soon? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, I hope Dr. Bill is not frozen. Uh, if I would like Dr. Bill to say a couple of words and then Dr. T, if you are still around, we would like you to help us close the meeting. Uh, Dr. Bill, are you around, Dr. Bill? Thank you, Mabel. Yes. Yes, he is. Ah, okay, good. Can you hey. say something and then Dr. T will help us close tonight? Yeah, thank you. I've been paying close attention to everybody talking today and taking a uh, inventory of the uh, well-being of our passion group and i can report to you that we are well that we are centered and that we are fired up mm. we are ready to rock and roll we've we've been talking about personal issues a bit today because when, when we 
we get into the self-help arena and then we know we can't do it by ourselves. We have to have higher powers giving us the support to get through. Then we start to see things differently. And so today was beneficial for those points to be brought up and to reflect upon them. So I'm, I'm pleased that we spent the time uh, introspectively today. Mm. Uh, a lot of times we get kind of uh, jaded talking about the features and benefits of a software program, don't we? We have to do both. We have to fix ourselves as well as fix our software that's not working. So we have uh, software up here that may be as important as anything else. Uh, Chinishai has definitely given us that uh, framework to work on it. You know, she's she's given us what we need. So thank you, Dr. Ford. And I appreciate the time and effort that everybody puts in to kind of support a concept that's brought out by our main speaker. And that that's very valuable. Mm. Thank you for the attendance, everyone. 50 people stay to the end. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Bill. Dr. T? Yes. Thank you so much. I am honored, as I, as I mentioned before, to be on this platform. You know, I, I, don't, I don't take this lightly. I, I'm, I am just grateful to God. You all are, you all are, are a wonderful, awesome group of people. And I say that with, with all sincerity. I'm not just being facetious. I mean it with, from the heart that you are, are wonderful. And I thank you, Debbie, Queen Debbie, for even... Um, Thinking enough of me to even invite me to be on this platform. You know, you didn't have to do that, but you did. And I appreciate you very much. Um, this particular topic is very close to my heart because it is one of my books. Well, it's not actually my book, but I took excerpts from my book. I'll, I'll say that. But I want you all to remember that, you know, that in order for us to do this, let me just back up and say this. It's, for me, it's always about transformation. I believe that as a little girl, God spoke to me and, and gave me my purpose. And I can't always, I can't tell you that I stayed on course the whole, all of my life because I haven't. I got off course, but I believe I'm back on course. And that's all of us sometimes. Sometimes we don't always stay the course, we get off course. But I know that by applying these keys and principles and, 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 and just living out what we can do with that, with Mr. Ash, with Forest Vision, with the monies and the platform that he's given us and the opportunities. I believe that we can be the best people we can be. And again, you know, putting God first, you know, working on your inner self, freeing yourself from toxic relationships, getting rid of rituals and bad habits, and 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 just th trusting God with your future. And I just know when we apply these keys that we are in for a wonderful, successful ride. And I thank you guys again for this opportunity. God bless all of you. Enjoy your weekend. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. T. Thank you so much. Uh, if you allow us, we will invite you again, you know, you. to speak your heart and transform us further. So thank you, everyone. Jeannie, would you like to say something, Jeannie? Uh, how yes. the night touches you also and yes. help us close. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mabel. And uh, thank you, Dr. T, Dr. Bill, and the rest of the speaker, and Sister Debbie and the rest. Uh, and Dr. T, wow, you you really, really touch our hearts. And uh, we are in line. We are in line because uh, we are all God's children. And uh, whatever you, you share with us about, about God really touches my heart. Yeah, I don't know about the rest, but for me, yes. I, God is number one in my life. Uh, and on passive, passion is my passion. Mm -hmm. And uh, definitely, oh bless is for me. And definitely, I'm going to be out there. Uh, eradicating poverty and uplifting humanity. And so uh, we are all in it to win it. And we are all with Ash Mufara. Mm. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Thank you, thank you so much. And thank you everyone for being here with us tonight. Like what Dr. Bill says, from the beginning till the end. Yes. <laughs> so let's meet again next Thursday. Thank you so much. Thank yeah. you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night, everyone. Bye, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. <laughs> See you next week. <laughs>